Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues. This is Session 4, Part 6 of the discussion, God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing facts about the laws of compensation or the analogy of reaping what is sown, and how compensation drives forgiveness and repentance. This session was recorded on 19th of September 2017 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. So next up, emotional insensitivity creates a perception of a time delay between sowing and reaping. Mm. So with the law of compensation, we, we often think that, uh, you know, um, nothing's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so nothing happened to me. I just went and cheated on my wife, but nothing happened yeah, to me. Um, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> yeah. So, so in that case, there's someone who's emotionally insensitive, actually. So why does emotional sensitivity or lack of emotional sensitivity affect our perception of the, immediate, the immediacy that we've established is a soul-based immediacy mm -hmm. of either compensatory pleasure or compensatory pain. Mm. Mm. And why do we often believe that there's a time delay between the use of our will and desire mm -hmm. and the feeling of compensatory pain or pleasure associated with that very will and desire? So it's the same question, just reworded. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is, I think, quite obvious if a person thinks about it logically. You can see that since uh, a lot of compensatory pain or pleasure is associated with emotion, mm -hmm. if I'm emotionally insensitive, yep. then I'm unable to really feel emotion. Yep. Now, I've, I've had a period of my life in this life where I was like that, where I, I was quite emotionally insensitive. I couldn't, I, I could feel other people's emotion fine, but my own was terrible. I couldn't feel other, my own emotions. Mm -hmm. I, couldn't, I, didn't, I couldn't even work out what they were. It's almost like I'm clueless. Yep. Now, when you're in that state, um, you can choose to do things and not even feel the consequences of what you've just chosen to do. Mm. And obviously that then means to you that, oh, I didn't have any consequence or there must be a time delay to the consequence yeah. when the reality is, no, the consequence was, was immediate, but I just didn't feel it yes. because I was emotionally insensitive and unable to feel it. Yeah. So you can see that uh, it's very important if we're truly going to be sensitive to compensatory issues, we really need to develop emotional sensitivity. Yes. And, and unless we develop mo emotional sensitivity, we are always going to believe that there was a, no bad thing or, or no good thing even, <laughs> no good or bad thing. You know, yeah. We're not going to be able to measure either yep. because we're not emotionally sensitive enough to know when uh, there was a pleasure-based uh, feeling coming, you know, of, of through the law yeah. or a pain-based feeling coming through the law. We just don't know the difference between the two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if I can ask you more about that, you talked and we talked about this in private recently when you were very detuned emotionally, so very numbed out emotionally. Mm -hmm. You couldn't feel that true pain and true pleasure being brought upon your soul. Um, and I can remember times in my life, a lot of time in my life, pretty much all of it, where I've been completely numbed out to my real soul desires, my mm -hmm. true feelings. I had a sort of a, another kind of imposed world of what was good and bad and, and I took it on to feeling good and bad through suppression imposed by my family and my environment growing up. And then what I ended up seeking was the pleasure of having addictions met mm -hmm. and the avoidance of pain, which was basically I felt pain and discomfort and fear any time I grew anywhere near my true emotional self. Mm -hmm. So in that state that I was in, I was also emotionally insensitive, wasn't I? Because mm -hmm. the only pain and pleasure I thought of was actually addiction met, addiction not met, addiction not, and, and this is what I see a lot of people in, they think they're experiencing emotion and feeling good or feeling bad, but we're still, the, 
still we're in the all facade still dis- of it all. Disconnected from true emotional sensitivity, aren't we? Yes, yeah, so I think. Yeah, I think when you in in this state where you're in the facade of everything, you yeah. know. So so when you when you get an addiction met, you think, oh, everything's wonderful, my life's wonderful, and, and you I go feel around pleasure and happy in a frenzy and, getting yeah, that addiction yeah. met, and isn't it wonderful? And not not seeing any of the real true emotional results of what you're doing. And then on the other side, uh, when your addictions are not getting met, you go into these tantrums, you know, like, yeah. oh, it's terrible, my life's terrible. <laughs> and you, you know, you, you cry, you're screaming and yelling about <laughs> yeah. your life, basically, yeah, yeah. and crying about your life. But none of it is real either, because yeah. you're not really addressing the real reason. You're yeah. not taking action upon the real reason why your life is so bad, which is the fact that you expect your addictions to get met <laughs> and they're not. <laughs> So, so that and addictions really, in a lot of ways, while they are heavily involved in sin, yeah. they uh, are not uh, very much involved in loving behaviour. No. <laughs> and therefore, um, any pleasure that we receive from them is really imaginary and also temporary. Transient. Transient. Yeah. yeah. And I feel that it's very important for people to to not mistake tantrums and pleasure from addiction. Mm and tantrums from addictions not getting met yeah. with true emotional sensitivity of yeah. the soul in the in the, how the words laws of compensation work. Yes. Because if you make mistake those two things, you can get yourself very confused very quickly. <laughs> yes. Well, that's why I just had a light bulb to bring it up because mm. I mm. think it's an area where lots of us get confused. I see most people in tantrum mm-hmm. thinking that they are actually crying about a causal mm. emotion. Mm. when the reality is they're just in a big spit about the fact that they're not getting an addiction met. Yes. And yes, and and a lot of us have, you know, a lot of people have feelings like, my family's great, everything's great, we're so loving, it's all good. Um, you know, some people don't. Some, and when you sit there with them, but, it's just codependence <laughs> everywhere. Yes. <laughs> and, and also there's a lot of suppressed emotion usually if yeah. you've grown up in that environment that you weren't allowed to feel and then uh and have suppressed so happily and readily yeah that now it's like you don't think it's even there yes. but a person who's emotionally sensitive can feel that it is there yes and once you start to do any level of sincere emotional work you suddenly encounter it and yes. it can be quite shocking but that's getting us closer to emotional sensitivity exactly yeah so for most people there's to become emotionally sensitive is going to they're going to go through a painful process initially yes. of having to give up their addictions to give out a whole heap of rage about not getting their addictions mm. match, which is having the tantrum first, mm. give up their addiction and then start feeling some of their fears and deeper emotions, grief mm. about the actual real feelings that they have rather than, you know, just living in a world of facade. And that, that is a difficult process. And that's not what we're talking about when we're talking about emotional sensitivity here. We're, mm. we're saying when you're emotionally sensitive, you've almost completed that process to yeah. a large degree. And now you're sensitive to every little thing that happens. And you, you're sensitive to how others feel, but you're also sensitive to how you feel. You're sensitive to how, how you feel if you do something out of harmony with love. Mm. It feels bad to you. Because you're feeling the soul-based compensatory effect in its immediacy even of the thought yes and and just the thought is has a has a strong enough compensatory correction Mm -hmm. in in the sense that it has an emotional pain associated with the thought that you can never engage the action Mm. yeah so people who continue to engage action after action in addiction they haven't even got anywhere near that process of becoming emotionally sensitive even though they might be crying every second day which is really in the end probably just having tantrums every second day yeah. uh, for not having their addictions met yes so that it, we need to make sure we don't confuse emotional sensitivity with the process of having to address addiction and work through addiction mm-hmm. which includes this you know grieving and and rage based process associated with giving up addictions yeah that's not emotional sensitivity you've not even started emotional <laughs> sensitivity yet <laughs> yes and it's only when we're emotionally sensitive sensitive that we can feel a compensatory pleasure or pain as a result of our desire in action moment to moment or our will in action and our desire correct uh, being felt and on earth your facade is given up voluntarily in other words it's something that you personally 
need to choose to give up. Yeah. In the spirit world, your facade is ripped from you. Yes. <laughs> literally ripped from you at the moment yeah. of passing. Yeah. And and when I say at the moment of passing, you have to first become conscious of your passing, mm -hmm. as we've already discussed. But but it's ripped from you. And no matter what you do after then, you you know you're in the frenzy. You know you're yeah. in the addiction. Uh, you often want to continue it, of course, yeah. and not don't want to give it up. But at least you know that you're there. Whereas mm -hmm. a lot of people on earth don't even know that yet. They have yet to enter that state of even awareness of their addictions being engaged. Mm. And this is why we said in our previous section about the compensatory rewards for self-correction. Because basically what you've just said there about the facade, God is sort of forcing a correction upon us by removing our facade when we enter the spirit world. Mm -hmm. Whereas if we do that work here, there's going to be um, a compounded compensatory benefit because we've used engaged our will and desire mm -hmm. to actually do something that's more in harmony with love and truth. Yes, yeah. and maybe we should clarify how God does that in the spirit uh -huh. world, which is quite simple. What God does is that God doesn't let you move from your current location until you actually make a sincere change. That's mm. how God does it. Whereas here on earth, you can move from place to place, you know, location yeah. to location. Anywhere you want to go on earth, you pretty much, particularly if you're in Western side, you, you can pretty much go wherever you want, mm. if you want to, you know, and you've had the resources to. But that's not the way it is once you hit the spirit world. You're, you're, you're only going to be able to go to the places yeah. that your soul condition allows. And here on earth, you know, sometimes I encounter people with a big smile on their face and a slim figure and, you know, supposedly full of energy. But underneath you can feel this steely rage or hmm. hatred or fear or some, some other emotion. Mm -hmm. um, and, but people, people who aren't emotionally sensitive just accept the, the, facade. the facade, the pleasantries and the niceties mm. and all of those things. Um, Whereas in the spirit world, the physical form and even the demeanor, because you're so much in that frenzy, is all reflecting the underlying emotion. So that's another yeah. way that the facade is taken away, isn't it? Yes, and, yeah. and the anger is easily triggered because yeah. all of the things the person wants by portraying themselves in the way that they are on earth yeah. are all removed from them in the spirit world. So now they don't have them. Yes. And so they, they thought they should earn them yeah. because of this facade that they've pleasantly supplied to everybody <laughs> and once they're in the spirit world they can supply that facade if they want but everyone's just going to laugh at them yeah and 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 never give them what they want in the end so so at the end of the day it is ripped from you in so many different ways once you enter the spirit state yeah but the key is to voluntarily do it <laughs> before you get there because then you then your spirit life is going to be much happier than <laughs> than the average person's yeah mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How the effects of past actions continue regardless of soul condition. Mm. So this is where we start to talk about some interesting things that where some of the compensatory effects for past actions continue into the future regardless of what we do how we develop our soul or what future actions we take now so how is it possible mm -hmm. for our that compensation for our personal thoughts feelings words and actions may continue for a long time into the future regardless of what we do choose to do now to rectify or change them mm. And this applies, and we must say this also applies, this principle applies if we enter forgiveness and repentance for, mm -hmm. for different things. So if we forgive others and we repent for our own behaviour, it still doesn't mean that our behaviour hasn't had consequences that, we, uh, that are now out of our control and only in God's control. Because once we engage our will and affect the will of another person, now that we can't ever affect we can't ever change the will of that person. We can influence their will. In the, because we did Positively influence. or negatively. Because yeah. we did influence them in the very, in the first, very act. first act. In the very first act, yes. But we can't ever be in control of that person's will, can no, we? No, it's not yeah. like you can wipe out what you did now. Yeah. 
you can only you can only do everything you possibly can do to undo the the action that you originally <laughs> yeah. did. Is that a lot of do's and bits? <laughs> but it's good. <laughs> but, you, but no matter what we do, yeah. it still might not change what they they what are doing. they choose to yeah. do. Yes, yeah. and, and this is where this is how this uh, you know the effects of our past actions continue. Is it? And, and you, you notice this a lot with uh, systems of things on the earth. You know, economical systems. Um, medical systems, political systems, Econ um, I've mentioned economic overnight, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, environmental systems, social systems, education, religious systems, educational systems healthcare and so forth, systems. healthcare systems and so forth. Yeah. All of these systems came from the minds of individuals mm. at some point mm. uh, and that, that came from the thoughts, came from the feelings of those individuals. So many of these systems are of course flawed. Yes. And, and unfortunately, because it's a system, it lasts longer than the individual does. Yes. So once a, 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 pe a person or a group of people set up a system, that system has the potential to live a life of centuries or millennia. Mm. And, and in fact, in, our, in the case of our economic systems, most of them have lived longer than 2000 years at this stage. Our religious systems, many of them are older than 3000 years or more. Yeah. Um, political systems, many of them are quite aged as well. You know, still have, uh, you know, autocracies, you know, yeah. uh, on the planet, and they've, they've been around for millenniums. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can see that many of the systems that are created by, that came from the minds of someone, mm -hmm. ha have the ability to last much longer on Earth than the people on Earth who created them yeah. have lasted. And on top of that, even after they've passed, those people who've created those systems, those people might have changed and realized that their entire system was faulty mm. and changed them completely now yeah. but but now they have no influence or very little influence over the earth yeah. and therefore have no way of coming back to the people who currently believe those systems mm. are working and change their mind yeah so that's how a system can live uh, for a long period of time after we've created one yeah mm. and if you look at the physicality of a Quran or a Bible and how many people are trying to interpret the actual words without changing a thing, they have to fit their life and their religious faith. In It has to marry in some way with a physical book that is unchanging now. Mm -hmm. it, it There's just, it's incredible to think yeah. that for thousands of years we can... Uh, remain bound to a book and the people who originally recorded that book and so we're really bound to their condition yeah that that's a sad thing here you know there are there are things that are mentioned in the first five books of the bible for example or in the quran that talk about war under certain circumstances eye for an eye tooth for a teeth mm -hmm. these very these very old concepts which mm. are very flawed mm. and are logically flawed as well as lovingly flawed yes and are still remaining in these books mm. and unfortunately because they remain the people who believe these books are god's word as yes. they say unfortunately then carry those actions out yeah and 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 have a justification for carrying the action out mm. so this is an indication of how somebody right at the beginning wrote something years centuries millennia ago yeah. and yet still people are following it believing it to be something that it's not obviously mm. not and um and still engaging the activities which are causing future damage now if you're the person who did that original Recorded thing, it, yes. what happens to you? Yes, this well, is Well, fortunately, question. because of the higher laws of forgiveness and repentance, you can go through the full consequences uh, uh, of repairing these damages, even though the very thing you created continues beyond that time point in time. Well, could you just be clear there where you say repairing the damages, because it's not repairing the life of the woman here who's wearing the hijab. Um, it has the potential to. Mm -hmm. If that woman wanted to connect to the original writer of that particular text and that writer has changed their mind, yep. then that woman now has the potential to change hers. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are a lot more factors, unfortunately, with belief systems. Yep. Belief systems really are grown from a foundation that was first created in the family. Mm -hmm. Unless there are family situations, family emotions that are created that generate a certain level of acceptance mm -hmm. of 
false religious or false medical or false economic systems, systems that are unloving, yeah. unless that underlying uh, foundation exists, it's impossible for a person to accept the thought. Yeah. So, so every person on the planet, you know, particularly when it comes to families, has a role in continuing religious faiths, for example, mm -hmm. that are out of harmony with love. Yeah. Every person who is involved in the economy has a role in continuing the economic, economic system out of harmony with love. So we can't just blame the person who came up with the idea because it, the idea had to have some acceptance by yes. other people. Yeah. As it's like a Hitler, if you like, needs a following. Yeah. Otherwise, he can't get into power. And it's the same with all religious concepts that are false and that are blasphemous towards God. Uh, they have the same terrible negative effect of what Hitler had, to be mm. frank. Mm. And they are so bad for the earth, they've caused millions and millions and millions of deaths over the centuries. Mm -hmm. And literally, probably billions of people have died from religious wars yeah. over the centuries. Obviously, you know, we need to be comparing that with someone like a Hitler or a Stalin in terms of how mm. they've survived. Mm. And the only way they can survive is by a lot of the general populace believing these systems to be actual systems that work, right? And accepting the systems because of some kind of, you know, belief system that they have that, that has been prepared in them by their own parents. Mm. Now, we can't then blame the original originator of the system for the longevity of the system only. Yeah. The, the originator of the system created the idea, he wrote down the concept, he promulgated that concept towards people who would listen to him in the moment. Mm -hmm. but, but if those people weren't predisposed to listening to it and did not ha had, had not been prepared by somebody else to be predisposed to listening to mm -hmm. it, they would not have mm -hmm. accepted the idea or the concept. And certainly it wouldn't have been able to have been passed down from generation to generation to generation to generation, you know, for th hundreds of generations without each generation being prepared to accept the premise of the previous yes. uh, generation. Yes. And we can't say that the originator of the problem is the only person involved or only person responsible for that action. Certainly not. Certainly not. Yeah. And so God assigns the compensatory effects to each person involved, not just to the to one person involved. So Hitler wasn't responsible for the extermination of the Jews, as many people claim. Hitler was responsible for the concept of the idea and the enforcement of the idea come from people who supported him. And they were all co collectively um, to blame for such a concept. He, not one person is to blame. And the same applies to the originator of religious faith that has caused war throughout the centuries. You know, that, the originator of the faith obviously ha has a, a part to play, but they're not the only person with a part to play in that, in that concept now being extended through humanity. Mm -hmm. the, the extension of, of that concept through humanity required a lot of other people accepting these unloving concepts and, and acting upon them and agreeing with them before, before they could be uh, continued through generations. Mm. So, uh, so we need to understand that um, when I seed something, it has the potential to grow in my generation, but it also has the potential to grow well beyond my generation on the earth and well into the time when I changed my mind completely. Yes. <laughs> and so, so you made very clearly the point that the originator of an idea is not solely responsible for it continuing for generations. However, at the beginning, you were saying that person does actually have a fair compensatory of uh, toll on them. Of yep. course, of course it does. And, and they, once they change their mind, uh, once they work through the issues and change their mind from a spiritual perspective and a love perspective, and they repentant fully for all of mm -hmm. their actions and behaviour, many of them now in, are engaged in trying to reverse that particular problem on Earth, yep. of course, with limited degree of success, yeah. because the foundation of the issue has come from family-based issues that, that were, were, are, are established well before a child is even able to logically think, mm -hmm. and therefore uh, they accept concepts that are out of harmony with love quite readily. And that's why it's good that God's monitoring this whole thing, of as course. we've spoken about previous in this discussion. Oh, of course. But just to get back to our question, mm -hmm. which is really about um, 
you've said how it's possible for a compensation to continue. No, I'm saying uh, the effects. What I'm saying is that the effects of our actions can continue well beyond the time when we're completely repentant for them. That's right. Compensation no longer occurs for me. Yes, but, but if, yes. the effects of what I have done continue to occur. I can't stop them uh -huh. because it's like a runaway train. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but if we remove, because we're going to speak particularly about forgiveness and repentance in the next session. Sure. If we remove the repentance process from this, mm -hmm. then the equation is very different, isn't it? Of course. Because you, you're paying compensation for your, there's penalties imposed more and more, uh, the longer these things continue. But you can only pay compensation for the actions you've taken and the actions you've influenced others to take through your actions. You can't, you can't pay compensation for the fact that the foundation was already existing in those people yes. to accept your concept. Yes. Because that, that came from other people, you know, like parents in particular that comes from. So, so you know, this is why the laws are very good. Yeah. God's laws are very good. They measure each individual thing. They're not, they're, not, uh, they're not unfair in the way that they assess everything. And they're not trying to blame you for, for something that somebody else created. Yeah. But they are, they, they are going to associate all of the things that you did create and influence on you, onto you. Yes. Or to you. Yeah. 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 And the key point is that repentance, even if we do repent, it doesn't n nullify the deed that you did. And so um, even though our soul-based compensatory pain is gone, and our suffering is gone. And our suffering is gone. The effects can continue. Yes, and and, and cause suffering for others, yeah. unfortunately, and yeah. pain and suffering for others yeah. based upon their decisions and choices that they make. Now, you can't stop another person from making decisions and choices. You mm. can't. That's mm -hmm. their, that's something they need to stop. Yeah. And but but obviously you can try to influence them mm -hmm. to change their mind mm -hmm. and do your best to do that. Now every person historically who has become fully repentant for setting up a religious faith, for example, that is out of harmony with love, has always gone through the process after they're fully repentant of trying to influence all the people that they influenced in the other direction yeah. <laughs> at some yeah. point in their past. Yeah. And now they're trying to influence them in a more positive direction. But as I said, it ha will have limited degrees of success because it will depend greatly upon the individual will of each person who's accepted that particular faith or particular mm. economic structure or particular political structure or so forth. Yes, mm. yes. Um, if we look at it now from the other direction, say um, I've done something loving and then I decide, blow it all, <laughs> I'm now going to go and sin, mm -hmm. which can happen, can't it really, on Frequently, earth? Frequently, Sometimes yes. I feel on the brink of that, you know, where I've been engaging with what I believe to be a loving desire sincerely, and then it gets too, too much, and, and I just think, difficult or... I want to give up, you know, and go back to sinning, basically. Mm -hmm. And People uh, do that, yeah. People do that, don't yeah, they? Yeah. However, the compensatory effects for the original loving actions may continue after I choose then to sin. That's right. Yeah. Mm. The same yeah. applies to positive loving acts as it does to negative unloving acts. Yeah. Uh, the compensatory rewards can be stopped at any, you know, we, we can stop the action at any time yeah. only to have what we sowed continue. Yeah. 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 So, you know, that does happen on the yeah. planet too, um, yeah. where people do do a period of time of good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden they revert back to unloving behaviour or evil behaviour. Uh, but their good behaviour will also be remembered yeah. and, and also compensated for. Yeah. So, you know, God's not unfair with regard to that. He, he doesn't say, now you're a bad person. That means everything in the past is wiped <laughs> out. It's like you did none of that, you know. Yeah. He's not like that. Yeah. He, your mum and dad might be like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or other people in your life now might be like that. But that's not what God's like. He remembers uh, the laws themselves remember everything you've done so and mm. act upon everything you've done. Mm. Mm. And you've talked a lot about religion in this answer. Mm -hmm. um, presumably, there's also a measure of how much positive influence a religion has had over people and their will. Uh, even within the one religion, then the negative and positive influence 
Would you say that? Or? Yeah, there's very few religious faiths on the planet that have had a continual positive influence, yeah. though, unfortunately. Yeah. Because it, because this is the, is it dichotomy? Is it the the oppositeness of of religion? You know, there's some, there's some, you know, positive aspects to the religious faith frequently, but then there's also a lot of negative ones, and and unfortunately, the negative ones uh, oftentimes cause death of people and yeah. harm of people and the positive ones don't save people no. frequently and yeah. so you know the ba the balance is certainly well and truly in skewed in skewed towards yeah. the yeah. Yeah. unloving behavior yeah and um, there are some as i said religious faiths that are not quite like that mm -hmm. and while they may portray a uh what i'd classify as a facade based uh, way of responding to people at the end of the day they're not perpetrating or or supporting things like war or yes, or yes. intergender harm or yep. those kind of issues but the two main faiths on the planet the christian religious faith and the um the islamic, islamic faith both have terrible intergender issues to resolve it's terrible and and as a result of that they obviously will have quite a lot of compensation just in that one area. Yeah. They also have quite a lot of anger based issues with each other to resolve, <laughs> yes. ironically, and yeah. because of the history, you know, of both faiths yeah. and uh, the whole concept of an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth with both faiths have a tendency to engage in. And that it itself is going to cause a lot of soul based damage to many of the people who follow those religious faiths mm -hmm. and also who support that kind of ideology. Yeah. Then there's other religious faiths um, that are more peaceful than that. Yep. Um, and while, so, uh, but some of those more peaceful ones promote facade-based or a lack of desire, a desireless mm -hmm. based uh, life, and there the, there is compensatory effects of those two concepts as well. Yeah. On those particular faiths. So you know, there, there's you know, some faiths have one some large problems. Other faiths have what seemingly not as large problems, but but they are quite large problems in the long run in terms of ad addressing and dealing emotionally mm. with. So the key in all religious faiths is to find the truth. Yeah. And wherever truth can be found, there is always not going to be a loving consequence. Yeah. But the problem is that most religious faiths come from the minds of people or from spirits, mm -hmm. from the minds of spirits, and therefore are not in harmony with God's mind, not in harmony with the way God thinks about love. And as a result of that, most of them are going to need to be corrected quite in, in quite significant ways mm -hmm. on the planet before they could be classified to be uh, not, not blasphemous towards God or supportive of God's children. Mm. Mm. So there you're talking about the the um, compensation acting upon the religious faith as an organisational structure. Yes. As well as presumably the, the individuals. Individuals. Well, remember the leaders compensation, and individuals within the faith. Compensation only operates on individuals. Yeah. So, so uh, it can only operate on, on an organisational structure because the individuals inside the organizational structure have compensator effects operating upon them that's yeah. the only way it can operate compensation is a individual soul based operation it's not a collective operation each individual has a part to play in the compensator effects so mm -hmm. if i can let's say i'm a member of a faith like a christian faith or a muslim faith or you know some other faith mm -hmm. and that faith has some tenets that are what you would classify as loving towards your brother you know and i'm now classifying every person on the planet either your brother or sister yeah so so you know some of these tenets have loving attitudes towards your brother or sister and then those particular things will be rewarded yeah. if you practice them sincerely in your heart yes uh, and only if then yeah but if you insincerely practice them mm -hmm. then they won't be rewarded anyway because it because you're insincere and remember compensatory rewards are only based on sincerity yes so it's a facade of the so if you're in a facade yeah. doing that religious faith yeah. and it's only a facade mm -hmm. it has no reward whatsoever at all yes to you conversely if you're if you're practicing things in the faith that that you agree with that are unloving mm -hmm. right then of course you yourself will bear the consequence of that unloving practice mm -hmm. uh, now some people who encourage you to have that 
unloving practice will also bear some consequence. But yep. in the end, it is your choice and your decision. Because God's making us self-responsible. Correct. Yep. And so it, you will be asked to compensate for it. So even if it says in the Koran or even in the Bible to say, do a certain thing, if it's an unloving thing that it's requesting you to do, God is going to ensure that that is corrected. It doesn't matter what book it came from. Yep. And whether that book is called holy yes. by anybody on earth yeah. makes no difference to God. Yeah. It's what's going to matter is that the person actually, whether they practice the practice, which was unloving from the heart, mm -hmm. they really believed in it. And if they do, then they'll be for, corrected for correct. that behavior. Yeah. And if it was a loving action and they practice it from the heart and that they really believed in it and they practice it from the heart, then they'll be rewarded for that mm -hmm. action or behavior. It's quite simple. Now, the religious faith itself can only change when the mass, the, the majority yep. of that faith, have a change of heart. Mm. That's the only time it can really change. Mm -hmm. and, and so it needs more than like 50% usually, yep. but, but sometimes it's a growing movement, a small movement, and then it slowly increases, increases, increases until it reaches a, a mass mm -hmm. that's great enough for the whole religious faith to change. Mm. And once that occurs, now the religious faith is going to be more in harmony with God's uh, principles of love and truth. So when you have a country like Australia, where uh, it appears to me that rather than faiths changing, people have just left them and left them and left them. Understandably so. Yes, because mm. they've made a personal change. Well, not only that, it's a compensatory effect of each individual going, now this faith has some problems with it yeah. and it's illogical yeah. it doesn't make any sense it's immoral many times yeah. it's in being involved in other things like you know abuse of children and other things that, yeah. that offend me yes and um, i just don't want a bar of it anymore yeah. and fair enough yeah but but that doesn't mean that that faith is god's faith because don't and don't assume that of course uh -huh. because because the reality is anybody who does all of those things just mentioned is going to be out of harmony with God's <laughs> version of love anyway, and there yes. will be compensatory effects upon yeah. their soul for, for taking those actions. And you mentioned, don't ass I'm, I'm assuming that you mentioned don't assume that it's God's faith because very many people in Australia have assumed, well, if that's God, I, God I doesn't exist. To do with it. God isn't even real. Yeah. Forget about it. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's where I see religions doing a lot of damage mm -hmm. to people's relationships with God. And this is how, you know, Richard Dawkins can... Uh, the God delusion guy yeah. can publish a bestseller because people are basically associating God with religion. With religion, yes. And in his book, that's all he that's does. That's all he does the whole time, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And because people are so fed up with religion, it's like throwing God out with religion. Yes, yes. Yeah. And and the problem with doing that, obviously, is that is that it's not very logical for yeah. a start. So yeah. these people who pride themselves on the logic are not being very logical. <laughs> yeah. But but also it's connecting to the injuries of individual. It's a mm -hmm. way of manipulating people's addictions, mm -hmm. actually. When you get hurt, and most, most people on the planet uh, who have been involved in religion have at some point been hurt by that exact same religion. Yeah. And when you are hurt by a religious faith, now you have anger and other resentments that are inside of you that someone like Richard Dawkins can come along and connect with. Mm -hmm. And in the process of connecting with those things, psychologically, you now have an affinity and now you're able to be more easily influenced by the reasoning of that individual mm -hmm. than you would otherwise be. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, so but, but to a degree, the religious faith have to bear, or the people involved in religious faith, because mm. that's the people who will be compensated, uh, have to bear some of the consequence of this behavior because religions in in his, history have caused a huge amount of damage to humanity and are very slow at repenting for <laughs> their actions. <Yes. laughs> we see that's such an interesting point that you just made because say I'm someone who's been a, in a religious faith and mm -hmm. feel hurt by individuals within that faith. Mm -hmm. um, I'm talking I'm, now more about not being hurt by individuals, but being hurt by the faith tenets. The beliefs the within beliefs. the faith. Yes, yep. sorry, yep. I meant that, yeah. Yep. Um, but there's individuals who are teaching me those tenets of and course. maintaining and the faith them. and enforcing mm -hmm. them, right? Yep. So I feel hurt by that. Mm -hmm. uh, this opens me up to someone who's saying God's a delusion, it's all crap, mm -hmm. basically. Now, and, and to be honest, 
the world religious view of God is a delusion. It so, is. So in a lot of ways, what he's saying is true. Yes. So, of course, that's going to appeal to you. Yes, there is there's a degree truth of truth in it. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> yep gotcha. Um, but basically, for me, um, for the compensation for the other individuals involved, so I go, God isn't real. Mm -hmm. Now, most people involved in a religious faith would never say, I bear compensation for people giving up on God. But actually, um, while Richard Dawkins, from God's perspective, he's promoting something out of harmony with God's love and God's laws of and course. God's truth. Of course. But so are the people in religious faiths and the compensatory effects would be applied to both the religious person and the atheist person. Yes, and Richard Dawkins has only sold two or three million copies of his book, whereas the Bible, the Bible has <laughs> sold like 1.8 <laughs> billion copies. And so you've got to start bearing <laughs> how <Yeah>. much consequences. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's interesting. So it's potentially that individuals involved in Christian faith and supporting and upholding the tenets of a Christian faith would have more compensatory effect for the rejection of God within individuals on the planet than atheism and yes. the teaching of atheism. Yes, yeah. that is the potential. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Very. Given the laws. Very. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, that this is a thing that most people don't consider is that, unfortunately, you know, misrepresenting God, mm -hmm. which, which I call blasphemy towards mm -hmm. God, has a large damaging effect on people. Yeah. And whenever you sort of say that God's a wrathful God or a punishing God or a selective God or a God that's unjust or unequal, inequal, you know, it doesn't promote equality, yeah. you are basically saying you're blasphemy, blaspheming God's character, yeah. which has an effect on people when their desire for a relationship with God. Mm. And of course, anybody who does that is, mm. is affecting the person in the biggest possible way that they could ever be affected. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, Richard Dawkins is doing the same thing by saying God doesn't exist, so don't even bother. Mm -hmm. That's doing a similar thing. But his personal belief systems are that he wouldn't support war, as far as I understand. So, you know, yeah, as far while, as I, understand, while, yeah, I, while I don't know whether he personally would be go if he was forced to, yeah. that's a different issue. But, um, you know, the reality is there are many, there are some people in Christian religious faiths who mm -hmm. would never go to war too. Mm. So probably they're both at a very yes. similar condition. Yes. Um, he, he also, um, I was reading in his book, you know, some things about influencing the will of children and how he sees that as, especially when it comes to beliefs about God, uh, quite harmful and it promotes the free will choice. Well, no, he doesn't really because he promotes the lack of God, but which um, is which is still doing the same, same thing. thing really. He's really yes. criticizing their faith for doing yes. what he's doing. Yes. Uh, it's it's sad, but yeah. that you know, there's no the, again, there's no logic there. And this mm -hmm. is what I see with the writers of many of these books. They don't see the flaws in their own logic. Yeah. And they apply rules to other people that they don't apply to themselves. Yes. I feel it, it, the reality is that every time you share a truth with a child that is going to be rewarded. Yeah. Now, you've got to make sure that it's the truth that mm. you're sharing. Mm -hmm. And and if you don't know if it's the truth or not, yeah. then you shouldn't share it. Now, Richard Dawkins believes that the truth is that God doesn't exist. Yeah. And, um, you know, he, he, will, he will admit that he doesn't know for certain. Well, that's, but, but that's at the right. very last instance, he'll, he'll <laughs> when argue and under fight. Under pressure. Yeah, yeah, he'll argue and fight before then. And, <laughs> And unfortunately, that kind of pressure put on a child mm. will have the same effect uh, towards that belief as the pressure put on a child to have a religious belief in God. Yeah. So either one is just as uh, unforgivable, if you like, <laughs> although everything is forgivable, yeah. Yeah, but it's just as bad as the other. Yeah. It, ha it has it's a... It's like the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it has a large compensatory um, penalty is what you're saying really there isn't it mm. yeah yeah so we yeah. can see these kind of things happening all over the world where one religious form will criticize another religious form for having a certain you know way of thinking or way of action and the criticism is probably truthful from god's perspective yeah and then and then um, but then won't look at all of the things within their own religious form yes <laughs> that actually would also or could also be criticized from a point of view of love yeah and and this is the problem, is that it, all of these things that have long-term uh, effects from mm -hmm. past actions usually are things that uh, appeal to a wide variety of people on the planet. Mm. 
and therefore take a life of their own even beyond your lifetime. Mm. And every one of these things has, uh, has difficulties to eradicate because of the foundation mm -hmm. for, the, for these systems of beliefs to enter a person have to be established during childhood. Mm. Mm. I, I find that really, it's complex, isn't it? Because there can be a foundation existing within a family- Or society. An individual from their family mm -hmm. system. But then the person who still brings their idea into fruition that appeals to me because of my family system, um, sure, my familial system has, a, has an impact upon my condition, how open I am, but the person who brings their idea to fruition also does, don't they? Yeah, but you could also argue that sooner or later I was probably going to accept this kind of idea myself anyway. Yes. So, you know, because of the foundation being mm. laid inside of me emotionally to accept the idea. So, you know, this is why God's laws uh, are a better judge of everything that occurs than we are. <laughs> exactly. Because at the end of the day, God, God's laws measure each individual soul's energy systems yeah. and therefore are able to determine what the true cause or how a sin should be attributed yeah. to the different souls that are involved in the sin. Yeah. And, uh, and it's a good thing that that happens yeah. because no single individual ever could make that kind of decision. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting how black and white we see sin you, commonly as human beings it's, it's all their fault or it's all my fault or it's all whereas yeah i, I don't see so it as if white. that's the problem right um, i see god sees sin as black and white and we see things in different shades oh okay interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah you know like we see things like you know you might think that you know yelling at your husband because he made you afraid is okay <laughs> whereas i might think it's not so yeah. that's a different shade now which one is right well god's is right god's black and white about the issue yes god knows what's right and what's wrong about that issue and there's no in between from god's perspective it's either right or it is wrong mm -hmm. and and if it's right there's a lot of different versions of right you know there's a lot of different if you like things that could be done or said or actions that be taken that are loving and therefore right yeah but but there are certain things that are definitely wrong yes and god knows those things that are definitely wrong humans often portray the wrong as right yes and also often portray the right as wrong yes and this is where we are flawed in our analysis and so when it comes to a, a person's like the average sinner on the planet if we could say that which all you know at this stage there's no one who is not a sinner on the planet and there may be soon in the future mm -hmm. ones that are once they become at one with god but at this stage there's no one who is not a sinner on the planet so every sinner on the planet has some concepts that are out of harmony with god obviously yeah and and those concepts god uh, is trying through the laws of compensation to correct yes so every person who's sensitive the more sensitive you are, the better off you're going to be. You're yeah. going to correct your behaviour sooner. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of, um, say, I'm afraid, so I think I'm okay to yell at you. Uh, I'm prone to saying, that's all my fault. I've done the wrong thing. Or to say, it's all no, my see, mother's that, fault. Who... But that would be a facade. Yeah, because otherwise I wouldn't have done it. Correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that we frequently say, oh, I just did I the wrong thing, I, mean... I just did the wrong thing again. But, but the real feeling in me is, no, that was that right, that's why I did it. <laughs> I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think it was a good and exactly. righteous thing to do. Exactly. I mean, once recognising <clears throat> the sin. <laughs> Which means you would have stopped it and then you wouldn't you would feel bad anyway. <laughs> So well, we talk about that. So yeah. frequently the example you gave is really just an example of how much of a facade we are. Yes. Where we're not honouring the fact that we must feel internally that it's okay. Yes. Even though we feel guilty or whatever else we yes. feel, we must feel it's okay to do it because otherwise we wouldn't do it. Yes. Right. And and the propensity to blame others or to feel justified is an avoidance of the self-responsibility that compensation does um Correct. apply in ensure yes uh, so i feel the example given yeah. <laughs> is just an example of a facade rather than <laughs> rather than an actual feeling well well i'm a controller i'm a control freak yep um and there's a tendency in me to see this issue i have with control mm -hmm. and say i've got all like how do i solve this control issue it's all my family's fault 
Well, that's not true because I'm responsible for, I'm a grown up now. And you're choosing. Big arms and legs, yeah, you yeah, know, that's right. I'm choosing this. Yeah. Um, so then I go, that's it. I've got to choose to change this. And that's that just a facade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not dealing with really the, the causal creation of that. Well, the first and thing you've got to acknowledge is you want control. Yeah. And once you acknowledge you want control, you can now look at all the right reasons why you want it. Yeah. And now you can start addressing that and you can start seeing it as a sin. And once you yes. see it as a sin fully, you you will no longer engage the behavior. Yes. So so if you if you say to yourself, oh, I controlled again, I don't want to do that. The, the reality is you'd be better off saying, I do I want, do to, want do to do that it. Uh, because I did it. Yes. And therefore I must still want to do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, why? Why do I want to? That's yeah. the thing I need to resolve. Yes. If I can get rid of the why, then I can get rid of the problem. Yes. I, and I suppose, though, I was trying to draw an analogy about <laughs> compensation somewhere yeah, in this, which is example. that <laughs> God is attributing compensation to me for <laughs> my controlling behaviour. Yes. But God is also there's also from what you've been describing, there's also some, some compensatory effects upon the people who. Allow it. Created the feeling in me that I'm entitled to control. Yes, certainly. And, uh, and also the people who allow it. Uh, interesting. So the people who accept my control also have some, obviously far lesser, but they have some compensatory. It depends how much they no. allow it. If they really support it and they really go for it and they all agree totally with you, then they've yes. got just as much of an issue as you do. Yes. So um, It brings a whole new light to girls' nights, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Women go too. out and just say... Yeah, you're right. Yeah, right. And, to, yeah. and, to, and yeah. the nights down the pub or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And but, the blokes. Yeah, yeah with the blokes. Yeah. Or out fishing, you know. Because yeah. the, yeah. the, reality, the reality is that firstly, there had to be a foundation involved for the emotion, which mm -hmm. there's a whole heap of compensatory effects upon the people who created that foundation. Yeah. Then you've got to have a belief that internally that it's okay to continue this behaviour. Yes. So there's the compensation Absolutely. for yourself. And but then, the entitled feeling and the action, there's yeah, compensation with yeah, both, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, but then all the people who accept you do, engaging this behaviour without saying anything yes. have also got to deal with the fact that they obviously accept this kind of behaviour mm -hmm. and therefore they have something to be, they, they are also out of harmony with love yeah. in accepting it. And the people who promote and commiserate with the behaviour also. Correct. So, so a, it's not, a lot of problems are not simply like just one issue because yes. uh, because there's all this acceptance going on and all this codependence going on yeah. and it, the problem with every sinful addiction is that codependence in, is involved and, and therefore there is acceptance of certain mm. behavior that is unloving on the part of the person who thinks that they're being harmed mm -hmm. but they're obviously accepting the behavior somehow yes and everyone if 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 me with my sin of desire for control existed in an environment where absolutely no one supported it, um, there would be a major confrontation of that sin within me. Of course, me. you'd never get your addiction met. No. Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> <laughs> every day would be a tantrum day. <laughs> every hour, every minute <laughs> would be a tantrum day. Darling, when I first moved into you with you, I know, that's what um, it's like. <laughs> every day felt like a tantrum day. Yeah. But, but this is the thing, you see, is that if a person accepts your behaviour that's unloving, by accepting the behaviour, really enabling it. And, yeah. and you've got to ask yourself, are you an enabler of other people's bad behaviour? Mm -hmm. You've got to have the courage to stop doing that. Yeah. And that is a lack of courage. That's a character flaw yes. uh, from God's perspective, something yeah. for which you need to pay some conversation. God yeah. wants to correct it. Yeah. God wants to help you not have character flaws, such mm -hmm. as a lack of courage or a lack of faith or a lack of, you know, always doubting or allowing people's unloving behaviour. Which are, which are all character flaws and all need to be corrected for whatever reason. You know, you might say, I'm afraid. Well, that's a character flaw still. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not well, the, and the desire to justify the fear, that's an additional character flaw. Exactly. That yeah. is. That's basically saying, I'm allowed to not have courage now. Yes. You know, because, yeah. you know, and, and, God's not, and God's saying, no, you're a self-responsible being. I'm not going to allow you to not have courage. Yes. You're going to have to develop courage yeah. at some point. Because it's going to do you good in it's, the long run. Yeah, that's right. It's going to yeah. do you good and the and world good and, and the, the people world. around you good yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, not just you. Uh, everything that God wants you to develop doesn't do just you good. That's it, right. It helps everybody. It's, yeah. it's equal, equal you know, yeah. and it's a benefit. Yeah. So we need to start seeing that a lot of these long-term things 
occur because of a foundation that's already existing in an individual or mm -hmm. a group of individuals mm -hmm. that need to be eradicated really yeah and our codependent addictions are just me and you agreeing mm -hmm. on the sin basically. on the sin you might be perpetrating it and i might be accepting it yeah. but at the end of the day we are still agreeing yes that it's not a sin yeah uh, until i stop accepting it i'm still agreeing yeah. that it's not a sin yeah as soon as i stop accepting it now I'm, a, I'm saying, no, it is a sin. Yes. That, of course, will confront the sinner much yes. more deeply. Yes. And each of us need to demonstrate this kind of character. Yes, mm. yes. And there's many ways, isn't there, where, well, where you do that with me, but where you and I have made decisions, say, with people attending our groups and things, where we felt like we're saying this is a sin and nobody's listening. Yeah. Uh, we need to. So we need to act. We need to act mm -hmm. because it is a sin. Yes, yeah. it is a sin, and you don't realise how serious it is. Yeah. And uh, at some point, we've got to act so yeah. that you can see. Yeah. Now, most of those people still don't believe it's a sin, of course, so they get angry. But that's part of the process. That's yeah. the tantrum they're having. Yeah. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know how long it's going to go on for some of them. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, they need to have their tantrums before they're going to see the addictions they have. Yes, and the longer I go on, the more I feel that it's not the fear within me that is the biggest problem of my sin. It's the feeling of justification of holding on to the, the, the hurt emotion, the, the lack of truth emotion, or the, the feeling of justified to do, to do things to others or myself in order to avoid that. That's yeah, but it's, where even, the, it's even more, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, refined, refined yep. than that. Yep. It's it's just the fact that you think that it's okay to have the fear in you is mm. a problem because mm. fear itself is a negative, unloving thing. So you're saying the fear exists. Number one. Number one. Above how that, it got there is really immaterial now. Yeah, because uh, it's here. I'm growing up. Big hands, big legs. Yeah. <laughs> Still in your infancy. <laughs> yes, but you know, I'm not we anymore. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I get yeah, yeah. <laughs> So the fear exists within me, yeah. and I'm a grown up. Yeah. Above that is the um, the feeling that it's okay that it remain within me. Is what you're saying there? Yeah, or even that I can't feel it to let it out. Uh, the, so know. the false belief, I can't handle this feeling. Yeah, that, that happens even before the other things usually. Yeah, so fear, f belief I can't handle it. On top of that is the feeling, okay, it's okay to hold on to it then. Yes. And not deal with that false belief. Because I can't handle it, I've got to hold on to it. Yeah. Yep. And then over the top of that is the feeling, now I'm allowed to do stuff to other people. Which the fear dictates. That the fear dictates and demand stuff from other people. Which the fear dictates. To help me get away from the fear. That's right. So all of those are sins. Sins, every one of them. And all of them have to be removed and all of them have compensation applied to them. Correct. The fear, a lot of us, we think it's the fear that has the compensation applied which it does which it does but it's, it's but also layers. all the other decisions yeah. have consequences yeah therefore compensatory effects yeah yeah, yeah. so we, we need to understand that many times uh, things stay a long time in societies because these underlying belief systems remain in society mm. and that's that's interesting as well isn't it it's not the fear that was in my mother that is she the, pays the most compensation for it's the other beliefs she instilled in me you can't handle fear it's okay to demand things from other people when you're in fear you know they're the things where the most compensation will be applied to her correct yeah mm. yeah because the fear comes from all sorts of sources obviously yeah. it can be released it's an emotion it can be released but the majority of people put all these wrappers around it yeah. in protecting it yeah yeah. from being felt because most people don't like to have the feeling the actual feeling yeah. of fear is quite hard to feel of course. and, and it would be true to say wouldn't it that god has the the greatest level of compassion for the fear itself more that so than the yes. other things i'm doing to Definitely. control the fear god has no compassion for the things i'm doing to control, to control fear <laughs> no that's why compensation is acting more heavily upon them. that's right but god has have does have compassion for the fear because he god does know that yes there has been violent things that have happened on the planet yeah. for many women on the planet historically there have been rapes and abusive abuses mm -hmm. even in amongst their own husbands you know yeah uh, for many children they have been hurt and abused mm -hmm. uh, you know the reality is 
the, there are a lot of terrible things going on on the planet even today, yeah. and, but in individual families yeah. all the time. Yeah. And, and God knows those things and knows the, knows the fear they cause yeah. and how damaging that is. Yeah. But that, God does not agree with our attitude to it all, mm. Our, mm. our unwillingness to release it, our mm. willingness to perpetrate it further. Yeah. And in fact, if God was compassionate towards those things, God would be in codependence. Correct. Correct. And God would actually be supporting our actions. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which good. obviously he's not going to do. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. that was it. Thank you. That was a fantastic discussion about not just the um, effect, how the effects of past actions continue, mm. but the, the, within organisations and individuals within organisations as mm. well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Great. <laughs>